Hey guys, so we will be doing some more examples today uh, regarding velocity time graphs and the position time graphs or the displacement time graphs and the acceleration time graphs. So first of all, let's look at an example here. Here we have a position and time graph. So remember that this is a displacement time graph. I can call it a displacement time graph. Okay, because the unit is in meters. Let's see the first question. Just look at the graph. You can see that since this is a displacement time graph, that uh, the question says the position time graph below represents the motion of South's basketball coach during the last 16 seconds of uh, something here during this past weekend's game. Okay, so this is the initial point. The point zero you should have an intuition of this first the point zero he, in four seconds he then moves a distance of eight and till this point here he's standing still since the distance is not changing from the origin and always remember we are always talking about the origin then he comes back to point to the position four fourth mark as in the as in four meters away from the origin then he stands there still for a while then goes back again uh, 8 meters from origin and then finally comes back to the origin that is what's happening so now a question says determine the total distance walked by the coach during these 16 seconds so the total distance walked by the coach during this the, the 16 seconds so let's see it's a position time graph so we can just simply take the distance by the corresponding values so we know from time 0 to 4 he travels a distance and since this in distance the direction is not of importance so we will just simply be, be adding up this, the distances that he moved okay the <coughs> the length he covered so from 0 to 4 he moved a distance of 8 meters first then from 4 to let's say 6 4 to let's say 6 he just stood still and didn't move any distance so this is 8 meters and this is 0 meters then from 6 to 8 from 6 to 8 he came from the 8th mark from eight, 8 meters away to 4 meters so he again moved 4 meters we we know that he might have come uh, he might have come closer to the origin position and he might be running uh, as in moving in reverse but the direction is not important since the question asks distance so the direction is not of importance we'll just be adding up the lengths that he covered so again he moved 4 meters from 6 to 8 from 8 to 10 let's say he moved 0 meters since he was there at 4 from 10 to let's say 14 time 10 to time 14 he moved from 4 from the position fourth position to 8th position back again this makes it again 4 meters and then finally from 14 times 16 he moved back here and covered 8 meters back to the origin point so the direction is not of importance remember because the question asks specifically distance now since it's the total distance so we will just add all the distances it could be 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 8 and if you want to add the zeros it would just be stupid to add the zeros so I'm not adding the zeros here because they don't have any value so 8 plus 4 12 12 plus 4 16 16 plus 8 24 meters the coach walked 24 meters during these 16 seconds the distance was 24 meters let's talk about the displacement let me just clear it up a little here okay now it says determine the resulting displacement of the coach during these 16 seconds now if you remember what we do 
is we see the original position of the coach. He was at zero. And after 16 seconds, he was back again at zero. So, he might have taken a path like this, but after the 16 seconds, he was back at the same point. So, actually, we can say that since he was back again and he, by, by the 16 seconds, he hadn't covered any distance from zero, although he, uh, at any uh, displacement uh, from zero, because he's still at the same point. So we will say the displacement is zero meters. Also, you can check that way. We found out that this was eight meters in, in these four seconds. Then he stood here, then he covered four meters. But now since it's displacement, the sign is important. So since he's coming back, we'd call this minus four meters, minus, covering minus four meters. Then. He moved another 4 meters, which is since he's going far away, so we just take it positive. So we are taking coming near to the point as negative and going far as positive. So after this point, he's coming close to the origin and covered 8 meters. So this would be negative 8 meters. Now just add all of these. So this was this would be 8 minus 4 plus 4 and minus 8. So this would again give you zero. So the displacement is zero because he was at, uh, in, in his final time at time t is equal to 16, he was at the same point where he was originally. So the displacement is zero. I told you earlier as well, it doesn't matter how much distance he has covered. The displacement is um, uh, regardless of the fact that he has covered a distance of 24 meters, the displacement only looks at the original position and the final position and the distance between the two of them. That is what displacement is about. Let's see, let's go to part number C. Just determine the displacement of the coach after 12 seconds. So this is 12 seconds. So this is 12 seconds here. I think you can you can't see. So let me just change the color of the chalk. We just see where his position is. So he is approximately at six meters, at or five. Uh, I think five point five meters or something. But let's just say he's at six meters right now. Okay, he's at six meters at twelve. So if you want to calculate it, you can. However, you know that we can also calculate it by looking at the original and the final positions. So let's do it that way first. The original position is 0. The final position from 0 is 6 meters. Irrespective of the fact that he has moved this way and that, the final position is 6 meters away from 0. So I can simply write displacement is 6 meters away from 0, from origin. You always have to specify the direction. However, if you want to do it numerically let's do it numerically this is since it's going away so we have decided that away would be positive so this is a, dis a displacement of plus 8 meters this is a distance of 4 meters closer to the origin so this is minus 4 meters and this again is a displacement away from the origin it's going farther so and from 4 to 6 so this is 2 meters positive 2 meters. So let's just add these two up, these three up. So you will see 8 minus 4 plus 2. Again, you will get 6 meters. So that is how you find out the displacement. Let's see another part here. At what time did the coach have the greatest displacement from his starting point? At what time the coach had the greatest displacement from his starting point. So we know that when he's farthest from point O, that is when he has the greatest displacement. Let's see, how, when is it when he's farthest from O? There are two points here. At this point, he is at 8 meters from O. So his displacement 
becomes 8 meters here, positive 8 meters. And even at this point, he is at 8 meters. So again, his displacement is 8 meters at these two points. On the other points, his displacement would simply be, for example, at this point, his displacement is 6 meters from O. At this point, his displacement is 6 meters from O. At just simply this point, his displacement is 4 meters from O. At let's say this point, his displacement is 2 meters from O. So these are the distances, these, these are the times when he covered the maximum displacement from O. So 1 is 4 seconds, at 4 seconds, he covered the maximum displacement. And the second would be 12, 30, 14 seconds. So there are two times when he covered a displacement of 8 meters. Alright? So now this is we are done with displacement and distance. Now we also know that we can find out the speed or velocity using the same graph, the displacement time graph. So the next question is about velocity using the same graph. What was the fastest speed with which the coach walked during any time of the intervals for the last 16 seconds? The fastest speed. Okay. So, let's see. Since he's talking about the fastest speed, he's only talking about the magnitude and not the direction. So, it is not of importance whether he was running away from O whether he was running away from O or towards O because he's, he has used the word speed and not velocity. So the fastest speed, so on a, on a displacement time graph, the speed is given by the gradient of the line. So let's see, it's, uh, it would be unwise if I just start calculating gradient all of these. I can just eliminate some of them. Let's see. So. Let's talk about the two positive gradient lines. These are the two positive gradient lines here. This one and this one. This one A and this one B. Both of these have positive gradients. Now instead of calculating, I can just eliminate the one which has a lesser gradient. So that would give me, that would give me an option because the more the gradient, the greater the speed. So I would just eliminate the slower one. I would not need to calculate uh, the velocity using all of the lines. So that would be a smarter choice. So let's see. Uh, tell me, is this steeper? Or this steeper. Well, if I sit here, you can see that my life would be in danger. But if I sit here, I think I would be safe. So I would rather sit here. But in this situation, I would take this one as having more gradient in the positive side, this line. So I would eliminate this. No need to calculate this. Because obviously, even if I calculate this, this would be slower than this. The gradient would be lesser than this one. So this is steeper. So no need. But let's see this one and this one so what do you think which one is steeper I think this one is steeper because if you sit here you just go right you just fall on your head and you probably would break break a hundred or something bones so but if you sit here I think yes you will be you will again be in danger but not a hundred bones so I think this is steeper so I'll again eliminate this one just eliminating this one. So I will only calculate these two. One with a positive gradient and another with a negative gradient. One is a normal journey and the other is a return journey. It's going away, so it has a positive journey. The velocity would be in positive, which means going away from O. And here, the gradient would be negative, showing the it's coming towards O. So let's see. Let's just take two coordinates here. There are my two coordinates, 0. Let's find the gradient of this line, 0, 0, and 4 and 8. So the gradient would be 8 minus 0 divided by 4 minus 0. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This would give me a gradient of 2, which means the velocity at this point is 2 meters per second square, a positive 2 meters per second square. However, let's see here. Let's take two points. This is 8 and 14. Sorry, 14 and 8. First point. Second point is 16 and 0. So let's just find the gradient here. 
0 minus 8 y2 minus y1 is to x2 minus x1 16 minus 14 this would give me minus 8 over 2 which is a minus 4 meters per second square which is a minus 4 meters per second square this is coming back since I know with them because the minus sign this is coming back with a velocity of with a speed of 4 meters per second square and this is going away with a speed of 2 meters per second square but since the question says what was the fastest speed so this was the fastest speed since the magnitude of this speed is greater than this one and the direction is not of importance since he has used the word speed and not velocity finally let's say uh, he uh, let's look at the last part and I think we are going a little over time here but I think this is important uh, okay what was the average speed of the coach for these 16 seconds so for the average speed we know we just find the average of the speed we have one two three four five six lines so we'll be doing v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 adding up all the speeds and divided by the number of speeds you are adding so one two three four five six this is what we'll be doing now we'll have to find the speed of each one individually to find the speed the average speed of the coach throughout the journey so we know this one the speed of this one this is two meters per second for a horizontal line the gradient is zero showing us that this is a zero meters per second for this one again it's a zero meters per second and this one since they are talking about speed the direction is not of importance so this is simply four meters per second now let's fi find the speed of this one this the coordinates here is uh, 10 and 4 and 14 and 8 simply y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 8 minus 4 over 14 minus 10 this is going to be 4 over 4 which is equal to 1 meters per second square so a positive 1 meters per second square and this one if you find it out again try it yourself you will see that this would be uh, 8 minus 4 y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 8 minus 6 this would be 4 over 2 which is 2 meters per second this is meters per second so now we have the speeds this is 2 meters per second this is 1 meters per second simply add up all the speeds and divide by 6 so 2 plus 0 plus 2 this is uh, 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 4 8 8 plus 9 9 divided by 6 this will give me 1.5 meters per second so this is my average speed 15 sorry 1.5 meters per second so guys I think this was a pretty uh, detailed example I I think uh, I hope you guys have a hang of kinematics one dimensional kinematics now and if not then just uh, Stay tuned to it. I'll be uploading more examples so that you are you have this a firm grip on this topic. So thanks for watching.